Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim G.K. Well, welcome to an episode of the Core Business Show with Tim J.K. Today, I have a pleasure of having one of my friends on the air, Timothy Hartman, who is the general manager and owner for Faith Broadcasting out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. If you have any questions, we ask you, invite you to call in at 347-324-3460. Again, 347-324-3460. Or you can pose your question in the uh, chat room and I read it on the air. If we do call in, we just ask you to turn down your radio and press the number one so in case you have a question. So let's move on. Tim, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here this morning. Great. I mean, I appreciate you coming on the air. I guess you start with, let's tell the audience about yourself. I've been knowing you for probably 10 years now. And kind of tell us your story. How did you come into broadcasting? And how did you all of a sudden come to own your own broadcast business, your radio station? Well, I started in broadcasting probably back when I was about 16, 17. I was a minister of music for a church in Houston, Texas. And the pastor at that time was on AM 59 and KYOK. We did mm-hmm. the morning show there for about a year and a half. And then for the show, he got sick. So he would ask me if I was interested in, you know, being the co-host on the show. And I said, well, sure. You know, I'll go ahead and do that. So I became the co-host with him every morning before I went to school. I think it was in high school at that time. We wow. the morning show went off the air. We did uh, all of the interviews, all of the music. We did everything. And we was on the air from 6 in the morning until 7.45. And, you know, it was a great thing. We had, uh, we had uh, high ratings, high listeners. And we really was reaching a lot of people. One day, uh, the guy I was playing for, the pastor, he just walked in and told the general manager of, of that that particular company, which was then uh, KYLK 1590 AM, it's the gospel, and it was also owned by Faith Broadcasting LLC. They just told me he didn't want to do the show anymore. So what he did is, is they were going to close the show. They were going to take the entire gospel off of the air and, and change the radio station from being a a, a Christian based radio station, and turn it over to be secular, because that the the morning show was the main you know aspect of, of that that radio station. That's what made that station gospel. Mm-hmm. So in doing that, when they, when they were in talks of closing the station, I went to the owner and general manager. I said, look. Okay, I've been doing this now two years. I can run the show. And he just kind of looked at me strange and he said, well, okay, if you think you can do it, let's try it. And so I kind of worked my way up. I started as the, uh, you know, the co-host and I went to the host and then they hired me as the program director. Uh, you know, and then I started doing all the commercials and then I moved up to the assistant general manager for that company until one of our evening DJs passed away. And when he passed away, they closed the station within a week. Uh, he was part wow. owner of the company. Unfortunately, due that due to that loss, that's when KYOK went out of business. So I went on, you know, a couple of years throughout my high school years. I went on into broadcasting. I worked for several different radio stations, uh, 102.1. I did work for 1360, uh, you know, just different radio stations, whether they were secular or they were, uh, you know, Christian-based, radio-based, religious-based. About, I would say, eight or nine years ago, I said to myself, well, I'm going to one day own my radio, you know, own a radio. And so Mm -hmm. I chose to start doing some research back then on what it would take to start a radio station. And it's about anywhere between 750,000 to two point something million dollars to start what they call a terrestrial radio station, you know, which is what you can hear on your your radio. You can hear your FM and AM. That's a terrestrial radio station. I kind of Mm -hmm. put that to the side finances. So about three years ago, uh, well, I say I moved back home to Lake Charles now about six, seven years. I moved back home. I just woke up one morning and, and just started wanting to own my own station. You know, I just had, I just had the desire to own my own station. Uh, went and worked for KZWA 104.9. I was a radio personality there on their morning show. I did an afternoon show. I did some 1057 jams. I did some music over there. I did some on air broadcasting with them. And I really started the hunt on trying to build a station. I was 
weighing the difference between doing a terrestrial station and doing a an internet-based radio station. Because as you know now, technology is ruling the world. I mean, technology is, is, is on top of the world, and terrestrial radio stations are starting to move out of the way. Everything is going to satellite. Everything is going to internet. Everything is going to your cell phones, to whatever electronic devices are out there that's going to that. So I chose to start a radio station. Well, I applied for my call letters, and I was approved. And got approved to the FCC, got approved for our call letters. So I ended up calling the owner and general manager for Space Broadcasting in Houston. And he was no longer in business. And I asked him, I said, well, what did you do with all of the signs? What did you do with the name, with the logos, with everything? He said, everything's in my garage. He said, I'll never use it again. He said, I'm thinking about just throwing it away. I said, well, I tell you what, why don't you let me carry on Space Broadcasting? And he said, okay, come and pick up everything. So I went and picked up all of the logos wow. and signs. And I basically bought Space Broadcasting LLC from him. And we it wasn't, he said, look, just give me $25 for the paperwork is all you need to do. So basically I bought the company for $25, if you will. Wow. Talk my favorite. Yeah, that's favor. I bought, I bought the company. I brought it back to Louisiana. I registered it with the parish here and got our LLC to the state of Louisiana. Uh, and we began the, the long process of broadcast. This is where, you know, it, 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 it's not easy. Let's put it that way. You don't just wake up one morning and be like, I'm going on the air. There's a lot of equipment. You know, you have to purchase your equipment. You've got to, you've got to market your business. You've got to contact every record label, every artist to get them to send your music. And one of my, one of my employees that work for me now, she worked at the post office years ago and she handled all of our incoming mail. And, you know, she's here with us today and she's watched this grow. Hope? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's been very interesting. And- Watching him, watching his thing, you know, he'll come in and dig a little bit and tell me what's going on and waiting for his fitness for music. And so just watching him grow has been extremely interesting. And uh, watching his dreams. Yes. And, uh, you know, she, she watched this grow. It was a long process. And, and, you know, Tim, at one point in time, of, you know, when I started three years ago, I didn't realize how much money was involved. And I'm, you know, we got to talk finances. Finances is all a part of business. You know, mm-hmm. finances is all part of business. All a part of business. And it was costing me so much money a month, and we didn't have the the listeners and the con- the contributors. We didn't have the commercials being played on the air. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're in business, you have to go back and revamp what you originally decided to do. And mm-hmm. we. We originally started out as a listener-supported radio station. We didn't play commercials. We were just listener-supported. Well, that was not paying the bill. So we had to go back to the SEC, reapply for another type of license so that we would be able to play commercials on the air, and it was approved. And so now we've done that. Uh, and, with you know, we, we actually went out of business for about six months, I would say, maybe a year. We went out of business. Wow. And I started in my home. I started in a house. Well, when we, when I went back into business, I woke up one night and I think God was just telling me, look, I've given you this vision and this is what you need to do because there are people out there that need your services. There are people out there that need this station. So I woke up, told my wife, look, this is what we need to do. She said, okay, let's do it. So the next day we found us a commercial building. We went and bought some equipment and we got on the air. We made a presence in the city. And within a three year span, Tim, we have now grown to having full-time employees, having radio personalities on the air from 8 a.m. excuse me until 8 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. We have morning shows. We now play commercials. We are we are all over the world. We have uh, grown to over 480 thousand listeners per day. Uh, it comes out to be about 24 thousand listeners per hour. You know, we now have an app for that. You can catch us on your phone. You can catch us uh, anywhere you have internet, uh, you know, and we're constantly growing every day. Business, aver- business is advertised with us because we can be heard all over the world. And no matter where you are, there's so many listeners in your area that if you advertise your business, it's going to be heard. So, I mean, wow. we have that just grown, I would say, especially within the past six months when we changed our programming and really have reached out to Every culture that there is, and, and businesses, and organizations, and churches, and ministries. Now we are a fully, full blown radio station with, like I said, full time employees, our own commercial building, uh, mm-hmm. and you know we're all over the world. We're all over the world now. Wow. So it kind of take us back for a second when you went to you had to reapply for the, the FCC from 
that one license you had that would be community supported then versus being a commercial station. Uh, you got approved for that. So now you already have the equipment. So how did you transition to with this new license? You already, because it was already in your house and you went from there or you mentioned you went to a commercial building. Did you have to buy a lot of additional equipment to be a commercial station? No, because we was already listed as a com- we, were, we were listed as a religious station. How how you okay. were listed doesn't change. We were still a listener. To, I mean, a list, we were listed as a religious station. But as far as having the ability to play commercial, see, there are two types of radio. There well, there were more, but the main two is either a commercial based radio station or a non commercial based radio station, which means you cannot okay. play commercial which is more for your community, you know, like the colleges that have their own radio stations, things like that. Those are community-based radios. And that's what we tried to do because we wanted to be we wanted to be here for the community. You know, we wanted to be here for the people, but that just wasn't working. You know, it wasn't paying the bills. People, you know, we do mm-hmm. not charge our listeners to listen to the station. We're only air 24 hours a day, seven days a week, bringing the best and inspirational music, and we would not, we don't charge the people to listen. So we have to have, we have to operate somehow. We have to have operations. Mm-hmm. We have to have a budget somehow of operating. So therefore, we went back and when we applied and got approved for the commercials, we did have to purchase some additional stuff. We had to purchase uh, cart machines and uh, you know for the commercials. We had to have the new software, which was about I think it comes out to about eight thousand dollars for the commercial software that they're made specifically for radio stations. Mm-hmm. And so we purchased that. We, we got that in the system, and then we get up there and we start pushing commercial we start pushing hey listen advertise with us this is what you know we have the lowest rate for one and that's one reason why we have a lot of great advertisers that stay with us because of our rates are not expensive and you know when you tell people listen and you can be heard to over 480 thousand people per day that is a that is a sub- subsequent number and it really helps the businesses and, and you know it helps grow their businesses as well so Okay. When, uh, when we go back to the licenses, uh, you know, you have your AM station, you have your FM station. Uh, and you were always at AM station or FM station? Either. We're an internet based radio station. We're internet only. Internet only. Okay. Yep. That's why we're heard all over the world. We have, you know, listeners all the way across the Canada, uh, Alaska, wherever we have listeners everywhere. When we get our report, it shows us everywhere that people listen. Wow. So that, uh, so, they can hear you on the internet, which is really the wave of the future and the wave of now than versus been in the past. You know, a lot of people will go ahead and spend all the money to kind of to ramp up for an AM station or an FM station and have to compete with airspace and so forth. So you're totally internet based. Yes, sir. We are totally internet based. Okay. Wow. So how did you grow your audience with the internet radio station? Well, we have those cards printed up, the full color business cards, the full color what they call, uh, I call them postcards. I mean, they have, they call their, they are also called push cards or whatever, but you know, it's basically advertising. We get out there, we, we show our face in the community. I go church to church, I speak with the pastors, I try to get in and speak to their congregations. And you know, with me being a, a minister of music, it helps me get into the churches and a lot of pastors that know me and I know them. So they help spread the word. And it's almost kind of like a fire. You know, when you start it and other people tell other people and other people tell other people and it just goes on and on. We push it on Facebook. We push it on Twitter. We push it here in our parish, in our city, uh, all over our state. And then we connect with different ministries and organizations in other states and they become part of the station. And then they also tell their people and they tell their people, you know, and it just continues and it's growing, growing, growing. That's that's how right. we do our market. Okay. And when you come to, for example, when you went out and solicit for sponsors, you just use your data that you had. Hey, we have all these listeners here. People join us every single day. And, for example, you go to Coca-Cola. What do you say to Coca-Cola? Hey, come advertise on my station. These are Here's my media pack. Here's all my stats here. Were they pretty warm to that since you're just Internet-based? Well, yes and no, Uh the bigger corporate, you know, there, there's certain things as a religious place. I just cannot get my words right today. That's right. There's a, a, a religious station that we cannot play over the air. Uh, commercial base, you know, we had one client that we really, really upset here real bad in Lake Charles. They own uh, a, like a sex store, I guess is what it's called. Uh, I forget <laughs> the actual name of, and they came to us and wanted to advertise on the station. 
you know, because they have online ordering and everything. But because we are a religious station, there's certain things we cannot, that is a part of our license, we cannot broadcast. We cannot mm-hmm. sell, we cannot sell commercials that alcohol, tobacco, sexual, anything dealing with any kind of child pornography or anything dealing with any type of, uh, what's the correct word? I, I don't want to say. Yeah, yeah we, we understand. We understand. Okay. You know, we can, we see, we can't broadcast that. So that really takes away from a lot of the, the local businesses that want to do, you know, like restaurants, especially because they sell alcohol, you know, mm-hmm. and they have what they call happy hour. You know, like, you know, we all have happy hour at almost every restaurant. And so mm-hmm. because of that, so a lot of restaurants can't, can't advertise with it. So we have the restrictions. Now, as far as being internet based, when we do go to Coca-Cola and we go to Dr. Pepper and the larger companies, they, they do kind of frown on the internet station because a lot of people can start an internet station and close tomorrow. If you don't do things mm-hmm. the right way, I mean, anybody can plug a, a, a microphone into your computer and call yourself a radio station. You know, mm-hmm. anybody can do, can go and download people's music for free off the internet, play it and call yourself a radio station. Uh, that's not the correct way to do things. You have to have your broadcast license and your call letters and, and do things the, the decent and correct way so that you will be recognized as a radio station. So because there's been a lot of bad, uh, bad issues with ra- internet based radio stations, some of the bigger corporations, we're still in talks with them about advertising on the air. They're kind of still scratching their head because of the the bad uh, issues that have happened with Internet radio stations coming and going. And, and like I said, anybody can almost have a, an Internet radio station if you choose to go about it the, the, the back way instead of going in doing it the correct way. You go the behind the scenes and cut corners and, and don't apply for any licenses and just play music and plug a mic in and say, hey, I'm on the air, uh, you know, then it kind of messes it up for the radio stations that are really in business. Illegitimate. Try, you know, yeah. yeah, that were legitimate business. Well, wow. talking about copywriting themselves, I know that's one of the biggest issues. And I think, as you say, if you actually apply for your own call letters and you recognize as a licensee with the FCC, it actually makes it a little easier for you to play people's music and a lot of easier for you to go to radio stations, not radio stations, uh, record companies and ask for material and don't have to right. deal with the royalties. How is that? How do you face that with, I think a lot of podcasters have the same issue because then you you open yourselves up. If you do do a broadcast, if you're not a licensed radio station or recognized by the uh, FCC, then you have this copyright issue. You really can't can't broadcast without getting permission for people's songs. It won't care who it is. Is this Jumpy Key or Natalie Cole? But can you talk about that with dealing with the copyright issues that exempt stations from not having to deal with that issues versus if you're a non-licensed station? So to tell the truth, there is no exemption from that. There is you do oh, not wow. there no no matter who you are, if you're podcasting, broadcasting, or podcasting, it don't matter whatever name you come up with. It, it is against the law to to play music and broadcast, whether it be AM, FM, uh, satellite, TV, internet. It doesn't matter if you are broadcasting and you do not pay royalties. You have to pay. See, we pay BMI, ASCAP, CSAC. We pay our royalties every year. Because see, we have to pay royalties on every song that is played. Every every song that goes out over this air has to be paid for one way, shape, form, or fashion. And so what we do is we as a radio station, we pay a, a yearly fee to be able to broadcast all of our artists. And they, and in return, uh, you know, we have our licenses to broadcast and they send us the music, but there are no exemptions to... Oh, wow. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there are no exemptions. There are no exemptions because, you know, it's, 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 I don't really know how to explain, explain it in, in a, in a good way other than you're stealing. I mean, if you go and you, Everybody's like, oh, I can download this off the internet. Yes, you can download anything off the internet from a recipe to a song to uh, pictures you don't even want to know about. I mean, anything can be found on the internet. That don't mean it's right. It does not mm-hmm. mean it's right. You know, I can sit here and me and my staff can be on the internet all day long, dro- uh, pulling down every song in the world, downloading them, saving them on a the disc, and putting them on the air. But see, that's not the correct way of doing things. That's not right. So the, correct- you know, the correct way so- is, go ahead. Yeah, the correct way is if you're going to do any broadcast whatsoever, you really need to contact the BNI, uh, CSAC, and ASCAP and open a license uh, with them to uh, 
to in order to play somebody's music. So what they gonna ask you to do is to give okay, what what's your playlist and what did you play? And then you just nope. pay this fee. Or how does that work? No, nope. so I think what the way if I were, I mean it's been so many years now since I've gone back and and apply for it, and we just automatically pay them now. Uh, I I think the application it asks for your call letters, it asks you know your station dial position if you're AM FM, whether you're terrestrial or internet, you know it asks for all of the information and it uh you, you fill all that out and then based on your programming, based on your the type of station you are, that is how they figure your you know some stations pay monthly. Some stations play quarterly and some stations play yearly, and we're one of the yearly paying stations. We just pay once a year, and it's really not that expensive. It's probably, I would say, around 800 to $900 per license a year, and that covers that covers everything that we play because we're a religious station. Now, some stations that may play R&B or contemporary hip-hop, stuff like that, they're with us? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, some, of, you know, some of the stations, they may require you to pay uh, song by song by song, which means at the end of every month, you'll turn in your playlist and they will figure it out and then bill you for everything played for that particular month. So it just all depends on the license that they approve you for and that they, they assign to you. Okay. And, uh, okay. So again, they can go to BNI or, and CSAC and, uh, yeah. ASCAP to apply for those licenses if you're, or going to be a broadcast or internet or whatever. Uh, right. if you should go ahead and apply for those to protect yourselves. Uh, the versus them finding out the other way, the back way. That is, yeah, you you don't okay. want to find out than doing something wrong. Because <laughs> you, let me tell you, the FCC fines. The FCC fines you for things that you're not supposed to do, and the lowest fine for the FCC is about twelve thousand dollars. Wow, twelve thousand dollars. So that's just something to keep in your mind. If you're going to do things, do things the right way. Don't try to cut corners. You know, I encourage you as business owners, if you're, if you're looking into broadcasting, if you're looking at the podcast and they're going internet, whether it be internet or terrestrial, however you decide to go with satellite, do it the correct way. Because all it takes is one good lick from the FCC to come back and say, hey, guess what? You're broadcasting without a license. Here's a $12,000 fine. Pay it or go to jail. You know, mm-hmm. or here's a $30,000 fine. Pay it. Go to jail. Get shut down. They, they don't, they don't, they don't play. It's not, is there, they're nothing to play with. They're nothing to play with. Okay. Uh, so taking that account, for example, if a record company uh, solicits you, uh, say, for example, uh, here's an independent label who wants to send you their artist CD. I remember having a conversation with Edwin Hawkins uh, literally a week ago. Uh, we did a show with him, and he said one of the hardest things is really today is get getting his music. And he's not just saying his music. is really getting on any station is getting your music played. Um, Across the board, I uh, says right. it's it become increasingly hard because I think some people are just used to a certain culture of uh, kind of middle of the road music, and they just won't stray too much uh, either traditional or go to this extreme. They really just stay in, in the middle of the road, which is more contemporary pop. And I remember uh, years ago, even with uh, talking to Frank out of Malico when he was when he was living. Before he passed away, I think in ninety two or ninety three, he said that one of his challenges. He says he really don't have a problem in the South getting his stuff played in Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana, some Texas, but as you go up in the northern states or the West Coast and East Coast, it's hard to get their stuff, which is a traditional format played. Uh, any advice that you you would have uh, if some an artist out there wanted to get their stuff played? Uh, how should they approach a radio, uh, radio station to get that played? And also, it brings the other question, part two of that, how do you deal with the license uh, with uh, ASCAP and so forth? So if a, if a record company give you the CD, do you still have to pay for the license, even they gave that to you? Yes, well, let's, let's go back to part one. Uh, okay. Part one is a battle. And part one is a battle that I face daily. Uh, okay. I try to, I, personally, I spend a lot of time on the phone. I try to contact each artist individually. You know, I'll try to call Lee Williams in the field of QCs. I'll try to call, uh, you know, Darwin Hawkins myself. I, I will try to get, I will do the research. I will contact the record labels. I will go through everything to try to get to the actual, uh, artist myself. Because what happens with the radio, with the, with the record label? They only want to send out the single, the best playing single to be heard. That's what they want to send. They don't want to send you the whole CD. 
And so oh, whatever, wow. well, what we do is we play the entire, you know, we have, we, we get all of the music. So we put all of their music in rotation. But a lot of times, you know, like I know when you're broadcasting, you want to hear your favorite song on the radio. And if there's a number one song in the world, which is, uh, we're going to take uh, Mississippi Mass Choir, They Got the Word. Okay, when that song came out, They Got the Word was the number one on the gospel billboard chart for forever. And so because of it, everybody just played that song. They just played, they got the word, they got the word, they got the word. Every time you turned around, it was, they got the word. Well, you got to realize, Mrs. yes, that is the up song right now, but Mississippi Mass Choir has 500 other songs that they have recorded. And see, none of those songs are being played because everybody just, you know, the only thing they want to send out is they got the word. So we were getting a lot of complaints from the artists calling and saying, hey, why do you only just play this, this one song of mine? Well, we then in return tell them, well, that's all that the record labels send us. So there's been a big controversy lately between radio stations versus uh, record labels on, listen, when you send artists music out, send the entire CD, not just the single, not just the single, because it's not fair for the rest of their CD uh, not to be played over the air and only their single, because it happens to be on the top of the charts right now. Well, yeah, it's on the top of the charts right now, but what happens in two or three months when it starts coming down from the charts? We still have that one song. We don't have the rest of the music. So what I do is I contact each individual artist. I mean, you name it, we contact them. Byron Cage, mm-hmm. you know, West Angeles Church of God in Christ, Mass Choir, Orlando Draper. We call them all. And we mm-hmm. say, look, will you personally send us your music or get in contact with your record label and have them send us your music so that we can have your entire CD? Now, part two to your question, the licenses. Ask Cat, BM, and I and CPEC. The way our licenses are set up, it covers anything and everything we play over the air. Through, for the okay, music. great. It, it, it doesn't matter who it is or what it is it covers. Okay. I guess if you just talk about your station itself, how you guys operate, who is your target audience. Just tell us about your station. Okay, what exactly, where exactly would you like to start? Uh, give me, you, I tell you, when you start asking me questions, and I'll, I'll get you the answer to that. No problem. Let's start with the, the, the staffing. How do you actually staff your personalities and what you look for? as a drum manager and or having personalities on your station? Well, I tell you what, what I look for is, is personality. Uh, I would, I would have to say is definitely their personality, you know? Okay. Me, sorry about that. I had to see, uh, no, that's definitely all right. personality. You. It's where, where you hear online, I mean, on air personalities, that's what radio personalities are called. That's exactly what mm-hmm. they are is a personality. So, okay. What I do is I look for certain personalities uh, for certain shows. Take, for instance, I just hired a new a new personality. Her name is Twinkie. She is goofy. She is hilarious. <laughs> she, she is a nut. I mean, she is just a plum the nut. I mean, just crazy. And that's all I can tell you. She is hilarious. You know, and she's sitting here right now looking at me like, ooh, I can't wait till we get off the air. I won't get you. But... <laughs> For our for our morning show, you know, I have Lady K. She she's a nut as well. You know, you know. As for Miss Twinkie, she just made it sound like uh, I just got a little cracker jack box. But that's all good. You know, you see that personality right there. That's what I look for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I have Lady K. This is Lady K right here. Hello. How hey, are Lady you? K. Great. Hey. yourself? I'm good. I'm good. And she she's on our morning show. And then mm-hmm. I, and she's got a great personality. And then I just hired a new one. Her name is Hope Carlin. She is going to do our morning from 10 to 12. She, she is more, uh, she's real funny, but she's more mellow. She's more laid back and she mm-hmm. fits perfect. She fits perfect for that 10 to 12 slot. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, good morning. <laughs> so, good morning. And you know, so, so I see you want him. perky for early morning as people go into work and midday, then people start to get into their routine and so forth. Right, right. You want okay. to kind of have, you know, you don't want to, what we want to do is we want to provide the best and in, in inspirational music to them, but we don't want mm-hmm. to take their mind off of work laughing so hard because we're putting on a comedy show for them while they're at work. Now, in the mornings mm-hmm. from eight to nine, myself, uh, Ellen Jones, Lady K, Twinkie, we are all, we do the morning show and, and it is hilarious. I mean, we, uh, you know, we're not v- vulgar, but we try to help all of our listeners start their morning and really enjoy getting up to something perky. Let, let, me, let me, let me say, I'm the same one. You know, I'm, I'm the same one of the bunch. She, this she, is Lady <laughs> K. I, I, I am the same one. She's not telling the truth. I promise. She's not telling the truth. 
So on faith broadcasting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at faith broadcasting. She's not. There you go. Half faith, half faith and belief. She's not telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. But we have fun. I, we we have fun. Yeah, we have fun, and that that's our main thing. We want our listeners to. We want them to be happy in the morning. We want them to be cheerful. Now, don't get me wrong. Want to be happy twenty four seven. But I look for mm-hmm. uh, for staff. I look for people who want to see the the uh, the company grow. I want people to. I want people that are here that will help us grow, not just come in and leave. I want people that's going to be on the air for a long time. You know that when mm-hmm. they come into this station, they are they are a part of this station. They don't work for this station. They are a part of the station. Exactly. You know, and so in doing that. Uh, I, my main thing is its personality. My main goal is to have people with a good attitude, mm-hmm. people who can work well with each other. Because, you know, sometimes look, all of us here do different shows. You know, everybody in this room has their own different things. Like Lady K, she's our receptionist. Okay, so she's mm-hmm. just at her desk eight hours a day. Uh, Hope, she she does our mid-morning, so she's not even here from eight to nine. And then uh, t- uh, Twinkie, she's here from eight to nine, and here it is, you know, 1130. So everybody, you know, we all work together. We come in together when we need to, to do something different and say, hey, well, let's all get together. Let's do the show and let's do this and do this and we'll reach out to the people. The only reason I'm here is because he's feeding. <laughs> to there. Wow. <laughs> and and we also are one fun, happy, loving yes. family. Yes. Well, I'm happy to come and visit you. So we'll yeah. probably be down You're there within a month. Time. Yeah, I oh, love yeah. Louisiana cooking. Uh, another question regarding syndication. Do you disyndicate any of your shows out or syndicate your broadcast to another vendor or? No, I have not actually done that yet. I have, I'm kind of skeptical in doing that for the simple fact, you know, like, let's say Tom, Tom Joyner, the Tom Joyner morning mm-hmm. show. See, Tom Joyner is not a radio station. He's actually just a morning show. So what you're doing is you can syndicate that out to everybody. And they, you know, it can be heard on every AM, FM station that there is. Being that we're a radio station, we're not just a show. We're an actual station. It's more mm-hmm. difficult to syndicate because we are the station. You know, we are the station. So, and you want to keep know, your own branding, of course. Right. We want to keep our own branding. Now, don't get me wrong. Tom Joyner, he has his own branding. He is the, t- the TGMS, Tom Joyner Morning Show. TJMS. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. TJMS. You know, he is known by TJMS. He's known by Tom Joyner Morning Show. He's known by just Tom Joyner. He's known by the, the TJ Morning Show. I mean, he's got his different branding. He is known. So, but what it is is he's just a show. He's not the Tom Joyner radio station. You know, he's not 102.1 or 107.9. He's not a radio station. He does not have call letters. He is an actual just show. So he could take his show since he's on the air from say five to nine. I think it is. He can take that show and push it to everybody because he needs to be heard. You know, he would. You know, we, he he pushes it to the radio station. Say, hey, play me because. I have a show that will bring listeners to your station. Well, being that we are the radio station, we don't just have just a show. We are an actual broadcast station. So people actually call us, and we syndicate uh, several different programs here on our station. So does that kind of answer your okay. question? So? Yeah, absolutely you did. Now, when you do the syndication itself, for example, uh, like for example, like Tom, when he syndicated his show out, I know some syndications – they pay the stations for that. Sometimes they don't. Can you explain how that syndication process works? Yes, they they do pay the stations. You pay for airtime. Okay. Pay for airtime. Pay. You know, it's, every station is different depending on what the stations charge. I mean, I don't. You know, every every station is different for the syndication. Uh, you know, I'm sure now Tom Joyner he pay. You know, a lot of times being as big as he is, the tables start turning when you become well known like Tom Joyner. Uh, okay. People. People pay Tom, the radio stations pay Tom Joyner to have them on or to have him on their station for the simple fact that, you know, it's now turned from, hey, uh, you pay us to be on the air to help you grow to, okay, now you pay me because I'm nationally known. I will bring listeners to your radio station. I will help your ratings go up. So now the radio stations actually pay Tom Joyner to be on their station. That's how that Same thing. Okay. Just like Oprah. Dr. Phil and so forth, they actually buy the syndication package, which the wheels has right. turned. But as uh, small companies, you know, I know a lot of churches will do their own syndication, like a Robert Schuller Church, he will pay the station, like whatever, pay the station right. uh, to Probably. play. Any advice to podcasters if they look at doing that and what they should look for 
and doing that sent syndication deals there. Do they have to hire an attorney to do paperwork or how, if they approach any station, what should they look for? And besides talking about how much it is, we're really just talking about how they would actually hand this package over to them and say, hey, I want to syndicate and here's the, can we negotiate the fee or if that's making sense to you? Well, or do you need to have a lot of things involved? There's a, lot of things that, there's a lot of things that go into that. First of all, when you're talking about syndicating, when mm -hmm. you're talking about syndicated, you have to be well known to be syndicated. You have to already have your listeners following you, you know, uh, something to push. Because when you go to a radio station and say, hey, look, I want to be syndicated on your radio station. The very first thing a radio station is going to ask is, okay, that sounds great. We're glad to have you. What's in it for us? You know, and if you say, well, we're just going to pay you what it costs to be on your station every month, like, okay, well, that doesn't really help us any. You know, you've got to bring your listeners. You know, you got to start pointing listeners. Hey, like, if you're going to, if you are going to advertise with us, I mean, if you're going to syndicate with us here in Lake Charles, you know, uh, if, well, I guess that really doesn't apply for us. We're not, a, we're not a, a we're, we're internet based radio station. But if you were a terrestrial radio station, if you syndicate here, then it's just the people in Lake Charles that would hear it. But being that we're internet, it would be heard all over the world. So the first mm -hmm. thing that you want to look for when you go and syndicate somewhere is, okay, how many listeners does this particular radio station have? Is it worth okay. the money that they're charged? Are we going to do this as pre-recorded? Are we going to do it live? Are we going to do it by satellite feed? How is it that we're going to get this? Because you've got to get the signal to me somehow. I I've got to get the program somehow. Are you going to send it to me via satellite where we do a satellite feed between me and you? Or are you going to just send me your your MP3s of your pre-programmed uh, or pre-recorded program and say, hey, every Saturday at so-and-so time, I want you to play this? Or, you okay. know, there's a lot of things you got to look at. Uh, and all of that is a figure in a price when you, whenever you go to a radio station. Now, I, I always would tell you now that when you go to AM and FM stations, terrestrial stations, your prices are going to be extremely high because they've got to pay for their entire staff. They've got to pay for everything, and they want top dollar. And it's a big competition, a very big competition. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really sit down and look at, okay, well, like take for instance, you know, we try to get as many people involved, you know, businesses advertise with us because we can be heard all over the world. That's a better for mm -hmm. a business and our prices are cheaper than if you go to a terrestrial radio station and have to pay them, then what the way it goes there, you're paying, say, we'll, we'll take a commercial. Let's take a commercial. It's $10 okay. per, it, it's $10 per spot for us. Okay. So let's say if you come to me and you want 300 commercials played a month, we're just going to use a big number. Well, 300 times $10 is what? $3,000. 300 right? times. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's three, that's three, that's $3,000 a month is what you would, you know, you would, you would charge or you would have to pay. Now you can take that same commercial and go to a, a and, and with us, you would be announced all over the world. You can go to the local radio stations. They're going to charge you about $35 to $65 per spot. So now you say, okay, well, fine. I want to broadcast or I want to run my commercial on the air. I want 300 spots at $65 per spot. You do the math. You're looking at, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 per month, you know, wow. and you only, you only reach, you know, 5,000 people at any particular time, you know, because you think about it. If you're in your vehicle, that's the only time you catch your AM and FM, correct? Mm -hmm. You know, they turn the radio on at home. But nobody hardly listens to AM and FM at home. They only play it in their car. Nowadays, quiet as it's kept, people are not even playing AM and FM anymore on their cars because there's a new satellite radio. Now, internet radio is being put into vehicles so that it can be called. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things you want to look at as far as advertising, as far as syndicating. You know, you want to look at, uh, what does the radio station have to offer you? What do you have to offer the radio station so that everybody is happy and the contracts are good and, and a good standard? Because you don't ever want to okay. have anything. So that that's bad. Okay, great. And kind of talk about your particular, essentially you talk about rates and so forth. So if they want to contact your station, how can they contact it well, to look at you, advertising? If you're interested in advertising with us, as I told you earlier, we have over 480,000 listeners per day. Uh, we mm -hmm. would be honored to have you. You can call the station at 337-502-8022. Again, that number is 337-502-8022. Or you can email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at WFBCRadio.com. Again, that's I-N-F-O, at WFBCRadio.com. 
and you can contact us and we will definitely can, we can get you on the air and uh, we you know the way we do things here is, is you come to us and say hey look this is what our our packages are i mean this is how much i have to spend this month and what we would do is we'll work up a custom package for you we will always take okay. care of our customers because because of our customers that we're in business so okay and when it comes to the um uh, do you have a Facebook, you have a Twitter feed, or I, yes, I think you have a Facebook page, right? Yes, we do have Facebook. You can look us up at WFBC or Face Broadcasting, one of the two. And okay. You can add us there. Now, do us a favor. When you get ready to look for us at WFBC, somebody created us a a fan page without our permission. Uh, that I just want to let you know, listeners, that is definitely not from us. If you're going to add us, add the actual radio station. Uh, Facebook, okay? Don't, don't add the, the fan page. We do not know how it was created and it was not approved by us. So make sure, cause, cause a lot of people add themselves on the fan page with them and they say, hey, well, we don't get any information. And so we found that out recently. You can also follow oh, us wow. on Twitter at, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at WFBC Radio. That's at WFBC Radio. Visit our website, www.wfbcradio.com. Uh, you know, we are on the air. We have an app for that. You can download our app to your phone and take it with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. Anything you'd like to close with, uh, kind of to tell the broadcast, you know, podcasters and our business as a whole? I mean, you had an awesome story at the very beginning, how you came into this. And, you know, coming from, uh, talking about favor, coming from a no, huge city as Houston, and you transplanted yourself in Lake Charles and uh, started uh with your resources start a radio station on your own from the ground up i mean that's that's really awesome really really awesome you you one of these uh american stories so uh i really commend you for that and uh again you have plenty of favor anything you want to close with no i just want to make sure listen i'm going to tell all of you your business owners remember this one thing in dealing in business always remember that there are going to there are going to be sunny days and there's going to be rainy days we're not talking about this weather here. We're just talking about in business. So if you want a successful business, this is the, this is the one thing that you remember. Just just because you might go out this particular week and make an extra $5,000 in advertising doesn't mean that you want to go out and buy a brand new Mercedes or BMW or go out and buy another, you know, a $2.5 million house because there are going to be some weeks where you may not make anything, okay? And mm-hmm. you might want, so you want to put that money in the bank so that, what happens is, is, is it all evens itself out? So you might do real good this week in making five, ten, twenty thousand dollars this week in advertising. You might have two, three weeks later, you might not sell no advertisement spot. And so therefore now you're wondering how you're going to pay your staff, how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to pay your mortgage, how are you going to pay your license fees and everything because you done went out and, and spent everything that you made it. Just because you make it and you have it, don't spend it all. Don't do that. That's a, that's how so many businesses fall. They take what they make and instead of putting it in the bank and using it for bills, they're like, ooh, I made all this extra money. I, I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go buy that. And then they get caught with all of these main, you know, you go buy, buy a new Mercedes at, uh, you know, $1,500 a month car note. You know, you got to buy a $2.5 million house and now you got a $5,000 car uh, house note a month. You know, you go out and you spend and then there are some weeks or months that goes by and you're like, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm not making the money that I used to make. If I would have just saved this, then I can now I can't pay my license. I can't pay the bills. I can't pay the notes on all of these things that I just bought. So what happens? You start losing everything. So the one wow. thing that I want to close, is I encourage every business owner, please do things the right way. Whatever business that you start, whether it be in broadcasting, whether it be an accounting business, whatever business you have, ladies and gentlemen, please do it the right way. Check with your parish that you live in. Check with the courthouse. See what licenses you need to have. Before you start that business, pay your taxes, do your payroll. Do not try to cheat, treat, cheat your way through because it will come back and, and, and bite you somewhere along the way. Perfect. It was well said. I really appreciate it, Timothy Hartman. Uh, kind of give us your website address and how to contact your station again. Okay. If you would like to contact us here at WFBC Radio, please go to www.wfbc.com www.wfbcradio.com. Again, that is www.wfbcradio.com. Or you can call our administration offices at 337-502-8022. Again, that number is 337-502-8022. You want to email us, you can email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, 
at WFBCRadio.com. Perfect. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Tim. I appreciate you coming on to the broadcast today. And thank you again so much. We appreciate you. I have a good day. I have a great day. Again, it's another production of the Core Business Show from Apple Capital Group. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.